and as I always say, welcome if you're new and welcome back if you've been listening to this podcast for some time. You're appreciated 100%. Our story in focus this week is about a new study that shows that fish have the capacity to turn into addicts. Yeah, drug addicts. As part of the six overlooked stories in this week's episode, we will also touch on stories that range from how a university in South Korea is now using toilets to generate power on campus, to how Facebook and another UK-based company called Liquid Technologies now plans to build a 2,000-kilometer fiber optic network from the Democratic Republic of Congo to Rwanda. As a reminder, this is the last episode for season two. Season 3 will return in August with a new format. So, rather than having one episode with short stories, we will be transitioning to a longer style episode with deep dives into a single or at most two overlooked stories. Our first deep dive will be an interview describing the human impact of economic sanctions in Iran. This episode has been a long, long time in the works. In fact, it's been recorded for some time now. It is a really good one. And especially now that the discussions between the U.S. on the sanctions and Iran has been progressing, slowly progressing over the last month or so, it is very, very timely. With that being said, let's jump right in to the episode for this week. According to new research, brown trout can become addicted to the illegal drug methamphetamine. This is particularly evident when the drug has accumulated in waterways. Researchers led by Pavel Horky, a behavioral ecologist from the Czech University of Life Sciences in Prague, has set out to investigate whether drugs like meth alter fish behavior at levels found in bodies of water. They found that it did. Some fish were exposed to the same level of drugs that can be found in freshwater rivers. The researchers then found that the fishes were suffering from withdrawal and tried to look for and seek out water filled with the drug. So, you may be wondering, how do drugs like meth get into freshwater systems? Basically, through excrement from users as they use a washroom. Even as the sewage passes through the wastewater plant and is treated, the plants are not typically designed to treat or remove drug-related contamination. The scientists raise concerns that the drug-related dependency mimic fishes want to hang around the treatment plant, and then this would disrupt the ecosystem. The researchers did not make any obvious comments that I could find about potential effects on humans who eat the fish, as the study appears to be primarily focused on the addictive impacts on fishes themselves. These concerns were raised not just for meth, but for all strong prescription medications that have addictive properties. The study was published in the Journal of Experimental Biology, and if you're looking at the references on the blog, the study will be the third link under this particular story. As listeners of this podcast will appreciate, we cover all kinds of overlooked stories here, from things that are extremely serious to stories like this one, stories that revolve around, you know, (laughs) who. Maybe some of you may need to put away what you're eating, but yes, we are talking about the good old number two in this story. Professors at a university in South Korea have designed a toilet that generates power from the poop of its students. The Uslan National Institute of Science and Technology now powers its appliances through energy generated from the excrement of its students. Students can also earn a digital currency for going to the toilet. <laughs> No, I wasn't kidding. The digital currency is called Google or Google. Um, I'm pretty sure that pronunciation is wrong, but it is spelled big G, small G, double O L, which means honey in Korean. And students earn ten Google per day, regardless of how much they um, contribute. The eco-friendly toilet is called BV, and it was designed by Professor Cho Jae Won. It seems like the idea has been a pretty big hit with the students. So I suppose this is a good reason to eat a lot of fiber. What do you think about this? I don't mind it, but I will never, and I mean never, tell anyone just how much jiggle I have. I don't want anyone calculating anything. 
That being said, I have questions. I mean, so it's a maximum of 10 jiggle per day. Is that limited based on the frequency and volume or is it just one of the two? I mean, inquiry minds want to know. What do you think? This next story takes us to Dubai. A large explosion has erupted on a container ship anchored at Jebel Ali port, one of the world's largest ports in Dubai. The blast sent a shock wave throughout the city, shaking buildings and windows in neighborhoods as far as 25 kilometers or 15 miles from the port. There were no immediate reports of casualties at the port and the extent of damage is not immediately clear. The next day, the Dubai government issued a statement saying that the emergency services had brought the blaze under control. The Jabal Ali port at the northern end of Dubai is the largest constructed deep water harbor in the world and it serves cargo from the Indian subcontinent, Africa and Asia. The Prime Minister of Lithuania Ingria Chimoniete recently announced that her government will build an additional physical barrier that separates Lithuania and Belarus and deploy soldiers to control the flow of people that are entering the country from Belarus. The Lithuanian government says that it has documented more than 1,300 illegal crossings over the first six months of 2021 when compared to a total of 81 in the year 2020. The two ex-Soviet countries share a 678-kilometer or 421-mile border, and the fence would cost an estimated 15 million euros, or about 80 million US dollars. Lithuania is an EU member, and it has accused Belarus of flying in foreign migrants and allowing them to go to the border. Most of those now entering Lithuania are from Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. For some context and background, Bilateral ties between Lithuania and Belarus have been strained since May's arrest of a Belarusian dissident. In May, a civilian aircraft was flying from Greece to Lithuania, passing through Belarus's airspace, when Belarus sent a fighter jet to intercept it. It claimed that there was a bomb threat. It's broadly believed that the reported threat was a ruse to land the plane and arrest a couple of passengers. Roman Prostasevich and his girlfriend, Sofia Sapega, who had taken part in a conference involving Belarusian dissidents in Athens, were detained as soon as the Ryan airplane landed. Mr. Protestevich, I'm very sorry for mispronouncing your name, is a former editor of Nexta, a dissident media operation with a popular telegram messenger channel. He left Belarus in 2019 and has been living in exile in Lithuania. Nexta became a significant channel for protesters challenging the August 2020 presidential election in Belarus, which has been widely condemned as rigged. So Belarus has a border that is external to the European Union. So EU officials now reportedly believe that Belarus is using the flow of migrants as a hybrid political weapon in response to sanctions that it received over a number of issues, including election rigging and human rights abuses. Beyond reportedly facilitating the illegal flow of migrants into the EU, Mr. Lukashenko, who has ruled Belarus since it became independent of Russia in the year 1994 and is sometimes called Europe's last dictator, has also threatened to block European goods transported through his country. Lithuania plans to discuss its plan for a war with the EU soon. However, it is broadly expected that the EU which is all for barrier-free movement, is really unlikely to publicly support Lithuania's proposal. Gamers, near and far, gather here. Do you have an old, unopened video game? You may have hidden treasure on your hands because it was recently reported that an unopened copy of Nintendo's The Legend of Zelda that was made in the year 1987 has sold at auction for, wait for it, 870,000 US dollars. Mm. It was a rare version that was created during a limited production run that took place during a few months late in the year 1987. This is not the first rare or pristine video game that has been sold for a large amount of money recently. In April of this year, 2021, an unopened copy of Nintendo's Super Mario Brothers 
or Super Mario Bros that was bought in 1986 and forgotten about in a desk drawer sold for hold on 660,000 US dollars. So yeah, check your closets and under your beds. You may be sleeping on a cash windfall. According to 2017 data from the World Bank, which is the most recent available, just 8.62% of the Democratic Republic of Congo's population are internet users. This may change soon because according to media reports, UK-based Liquid Intelligent Technologies and US-based social media giant Facebook are collaborating on an extensive long-haul metro fiber network in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The companies have said that a new network could improve internet access for more than 30 million people. Facebook will invest in the fiber build and support network planning, while Liquid Technologies will own, build, and operate the fiber network and provide wholesale services to mobile network operators and internet service providers. The new DRC fiber network will be part of a digital corridor from the Atlantic Ocean through the Congo rainforest to East Africa and onto the Indian Ocean that Liquid Technologies has been working on for more than two years. It will connect DRC to neighboring countries including Angola, Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia. The move will make Facebook one of the biggest investors in fiber networks in the region. The cable will eventually extend to reach to Africa, that is number two, Africa, a major subsea line that's also been co-developed by Facebook. On a personal note, I have trust issues with Facebook. On this particular topic, bringing network to millions and millions of people, but that is me. Let me know what you think. What do you think could be in it for them? Because I don't think anyone does things for free. Maybe I'm just overthinking this. Yeah. Comments on our Instagram page or Twitter or Facebook. We're everywhere. Anyway, this is where we end the episode for this week. Summer is in full, full swing where I am. And in fact, we're in the midst of a historically severe heat wave. Air conditioning has sold out everywhere. So, no matter where you are, don't forget, use sunscreen, moisturize, and hydrate. Also, don't forget that the show is going on a break till August. And the next season... And in the next season, the format changes to a bit of a longer deep dive style rather than multiple stories. I would love to know what you think about this change. It is definitely something we've been mulling over for a while and I'm really excited about it because in as much as I do enjoy reading all the stories and researching them, sometimes there are some I just want to get into in so much detail that I think this is going to be very enjoyable for everybody. Anyway... With that, I sign out for the week. Enjoy your week. And if you want to, stay on for the outro. Bye. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to tune in every week for a new episode. Overlooked is a Tunica Media production, which also includes shows like Africa in My Kitchen, with more on the way. So follow Tunica Media on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter to be in the loop. Until next time, have yourself a great week ahead.